Hello everyone, my name is Michelle Eckler. I'm one of the clinical dietitians here at Samaritan Hospital and today we will cover lesson five, fad diets. So throughout the years, fad diets have come and gone. In the past, they've included you know, the cabbage soup diet, the lemonade diet, um, intermittent fasting is a current one that's pretty popular, the, the infamous keto diet. So I'm gonna go over two major ones right now, being the intermittent fasting and the keto diet. We'll also touch base on a gluten-free diet, since a lot of people have been using that as a way to lose weight recently. Also talk about the Mediterranean diet and how to spot a false weight loss claim. So to start, intermittent fasting. Intermittent fasting has really become popular over about the past two to three years. You may have heard about it or know someone who has tried it. So what exactly is it? Intermittent fasting is when you don't eat for a certain amount of time and only eat during certain either hours or days. There's all different types of intermittent fasting. The first one is an alternate day fasting. This involves only eating certain days of the week, usually rotating days of fasting and not fasting. So on those days that you're fasting, you're only allowed to have low calorie or basically zero calorie beverages, meaning black coffee, unsweetened tea, and water. And you do not eat any solid foods these days. Typically, on the days when you aren't fasting, you are allowed to eat whatever you like. So does this really work? Not particularly, as those days when you're fasting, you typically don't feel well because you have no energy, you know, especially if you're diabetic, pregnant, you know, an athlete, it does not work well because you need energy on those days. And also the idea of eating whatever you want on non-fasting days typically doesn't lead to healthy diet changes. Another type of intermittent fasting, probably the most popular type, is just modified fasting schedule. So typically, you do eat every day of the week, but the hours which you eat are restricted to a certain time period. For example, a 12-hour intermittent fasting would be when you only eat between, say, 8 a.m. or 8 p.m. This can even be more restricted, you know, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m., depending on what kind of plan you're following. Um, so typically, you know, the results are variable. There isn't a lot of evidence to support this. Intermittent fasting may produce some results, but in the long run, these results are not any more significant. For example, you don't lose any more weight on this diet compared to just following a healthier diet. And a healthier diet is much more easier to maintain in the long term. Um, and the, you know, intermittent fasting is not recommended for a wide variety of group of people, including diabetics, pregnant women, women who are nursing, athletes, people with eating disorder history, so it's not a recommended diet as a way to lose weight. Another very popular diet is the keto diet, which has been around for quite some time. It actually first started in the 1970s is when it really gained popularity. Um, it dates back even further than that. Um, and historically, the keto diet has been actually used as a method to treat people with epilepsy when medications did not work. So what is the keto diet exactly? The keto diet is typically very high in fat. Usually about 80% of your calories come from fat and typically very, very low in carbs. I'm talking 50 grams or less per day when typically a normal diet is anywhere from 200 to 400 grams of carbs a day. And then usually protein is moderate, about one gram per kilogram of your body weight. So um, like I said, it first came about in the 1970s but over the past five years or so, it really has become more popular as a weight loss method. So how does it work exactly? So when you don't eat carbohydrates, which is typically the main source from which your body gets energy, your body in turn has to use fat to produce energy, glucose in your body. So that's where it leads to a semi-fasting state, so which is known as ketosis. You know, people often see that their breath changes that's one of the signs that you're in ketosis. Um, when somebody first starts the keto diet, you may experience what's known as the keto flu. You know, you get symptoms of fatigue, headache, you just feel really bad. Um, your mood changes, you may get diarrhea, muscle cramps. This typically lasts for the first couple of days, but as you continue to follow that diet, it does go away. Um, 
So people have had success on the keto diet, but there are a lot of complications and side effects that you have to be aware of. For example, you know, people with kidney disease or renal problems, you know, typically their bodies can't handle this, um, especially with the increased protein intake that a lot of these keto diets involve. Another big thing is constipation. You know, a lot of these people on keto diets have cut out bread, pasta, they cut out fruits because fruits are high in carbs, you know, whole grains they don't eat anymore. So you're lacking a lot of fiber in your diet. And fiber, you know, is important for, you know, bowel movements. So constipation, many people do struggle with while following the keto diet. Um, your mood changes, you know, some people get very ir irritable by following a low carb diet. Uh, also, you put yourself at risk for a lot of nutrient deficiencies since you are cutting out a huge food group. So I'm talking, you know, calcium, vitamin D, iron, a lot of um, vitamins and minerals are typically found in grains from fortification. So people who follow the keto diet usually do have to take a multivitamin supplement. Um, and also, you know, a keto diet can make it hard to socialize. You know, going out to dinner may be more difficult. Going to a party where food is prepared ahead of time you know, it really limits your options. So it's difficult to maintain because of that. And, you know, there's not a lot of evidence to support either, you know, what's gonna happen on your blood cholesterol levels from eating, you know, lots of fat. You know, people eat bacon, they eat cheese. Um, those things can negatively affect your cholesterol. So really, there's not a lot of science and evidence to support the keto diet as a long-term weight loss strategy and the difficulties and risks that come with it certainly do outweigh any benefit. So we'll talk about a more healthy diet later on. So an even other popular diet that's come about over the past couple of years is the gluten-free diet. You know, it's been around for many years, you know, um, as a treatment method for people who are diagnosed with celiac disease. But lately, over the past few years, people have been using it as a way to eat healthier or lose weight. So what is a gluten-free diet? Um, what is gluten to begin with? Gluten is a protein that is found in several foods, mainly being wheat, barley, rye, and spelt. So what foods contain gluten? These include pasta, bread, a lot of cereals, baked goods, you know, cookies and muffins, snack foods, um, certain sauces like soy sauce, salad dressings, beer, for example, has gluten in it. Um, what foods are naturally gluten-free? These include rice and potatoes, corn, uh, fresh fruits and vegetables, of course, dairy products, um, meats and fish, unless they have breading on them. These are some gluten-free foods. So um, mostly the people who follow gluten-free diets are following it because they have something called celiac disease. You may have heard of it, may not really know what it is. So celiac disease is actually an autoimmune disorder where the body attacks itself when it ingests gluten not knowing that it's not harmful. Um, so for people who have celiac, because of this response, gluten-free is very harmful to their body and it can lead to long-term damage to the intestines. Um, one, the only really way to treat celiac disease is to follow a gluten-free diet. It's a medical necessity for them. Um, even if they eat a small amount of gluten, this can lead to, you know, diarrhea, bloating, fatigue. They can um, develop anemia. So it's really important for that group to follow a gluten-free diet. Um, there is another thing called gluten sensitivity. So this can occur in people who test negative for celiac. Um, celiac is diagnosed from a biopsy of their small intestine or a blood test. So people with uh, gluten sensitivity they, you know, don't, the biopsy is negative or the blood work is negative for celiac, but yet they eat gluten and they still don't feel well. Um, there's a lot of debate from the medical world whether gluten sensitivity is a real thing since you can't really diagnose it. So that's still up to debate, but there are people who do feel better not eating gluten even if they're not celiac. So for these people, you know, if their blood work doesn't show celiac, if they aren't diagnosed with it, they can try to follow a gluten-free diet for several weeks and see how they feel. You know, if they feel better, you know, their mood's better, their fatigue's improved, then maybe they should follow a, a gluten-free diet. Um, the problem with that is that some people, they follow this gluten-free diet and they think, wow, I feel so much better. But in reality, it's because they cut out the cakes, the cookies, all those processed foods. They tend to focus more on, you know, lean protein, fresh fruits and vegetables, 
So that could be why they're feeling better. It may not necessarily be an issue with gluten. So, you know, should I be following a gluten-free diet? You know, I want to eat healthier. Well, there are a lot of risks and side effects involved. So just like with the keto diet, you know, you're cutting out a lot of foods. A lot of these foods are fortified foods. For example, fortified cereal and bread products. So you're putting yourself at risk for a lot of nutrient deficiencies. These being, you know, a lot of the B vitamins are typically found in fortified products. You know, B12, folate, also zinc, iron, calcium. These are things you need for your body. So you have to be mindful of that and you know, maybe a multivitamin supplement is recommended. But always speak to a dietitian or doctor. Um, just like with the keto diet, you know, people do find themselves struggling with constipation, especially since a lot of gluten-free products are made from you know, white rice, corn, and potatoes, which tend to be or are a lot uh, lower in fiber compared to you know, whole wheat products. So you're missing out on a lot of fiber in your diet. Um, the cost. Have you ever noticed at the grocery store how the gluten-free bread is almost, you know, two, three times more expensive than the regular, you know, whole wheat bread or white bread at the grocery store? Or those gluten-free cookies, or even at a restaurant, the gluten-free entree tends to be more expensive than the regular entree. So, you know, cost is a huge factor. Um, and also, you know, trying to follow a gluten-free diet if you're not celiac, or even if you are, it can be difficult when trying to go out to eat with friends, when going over to somebody's house for dinner, or any social event. So that makes it very difficult to follow also. Um, you can prepare ahead of time by calling the restaurant to see what gluten-free items they have, if they you know, practice good um, cooking skills you know, to avoid cross-contamination. You can talk with your friends and let them know that you have a special need before going out or before going over to their house. So in general, you know, people with celiac disease, a diagnosed condition, do need to follow a gluten-free diet. It's a medical necessity for them. If they don't follow it, they can lead to long-term damage in their intestines. But otherwise, a gluten-free diet is typically not recommended as a weight loss method or even a healthy diet plan. You know, you cut out a lot of important foods, it's hard to follow, socializing is more difficult, and it's more expensive. So a quick, um, run through of a healthier diet choice would be the Mediterranean diet. So what exactly is the Mediterranean diet? The Mediterranean diet involves eating whole grains like brown rice, whole wheat bread, oats, getting a lot of lean protein. So for example, seafood twice a week, you know, beans, lentils, nuts, seeds, hummus as your protein sources. It involves eating heart healthy fats which include avocados, olive oil, those nuts and seeds. Mediterranean diet involves a moderate intake of dairy and egg products and li usually limits red meat consumption. So all those things I just recommended make up a general healthy diet. You know, you're not cutting out any major food groups. It's not really difficult to follow. It's easy to make those choices while eating out. So the Mediterranean diet is one diet you want to look more into if you are looking for a diet change or something to help you adapt you know, a healthier lifestyle and it can help you lose weight too. Um, other important things in the Mediterranean diet that really help to make it a successful diet is one of the key factors is socializing with family and friends during those meal times. You know, you're taking the time to talk, chat with your family while eating. So by socializing, you take more time to eat and enjoy your meals and subsequently you start to feel fuller sooner so you're not overeating at these meals and you can really enjoy them. So one last thing I want to talk about is how to spot a false weight loss claim. You know, you may be listening to the radio, watching the TV, and some infomercial comes on about the latest, you know, weight loss pill, weight loss method. So here are some big major things, some red flags you should look out for when you're listening to these things on the radio or TV. So the first one is, you know, if something promises weight loss of more than two pounds a week, be cautious. Most healthy diet plans involve losing only one to two pounds a week as that's a reasonable weight loss goal. If it's promising five pounds a week, 10 pounds a week, be very, very cautious. Um, another big thing is you hear, you know, Jane took this weight loss pill and she lost 30 pounds in one month with no diet changes and she didn't have to exercise either. Well, unfortunately, that's impossible. 
as weight loss is a result of changing your diet or exercising. So you can't simply lose weight by taking a pill, drinking a special drink. Those are not just not true. Um, another red flag that you should look out for is if something promises you to lose weight even after you stop taking it. For example, if Jane you know, lost 30 pounds even after she stopped taking the weight loss pill, that's not true either. Another one maybe you heard on the TV is you know, a pill that promises to block the absorption of fat or calories so that you can eat whatever you want and your body just won't absorb it. Well, that's not true either. There's nothing on the market or nothing made that can help you block nutrients. You know, your body will absorb calories, fat, etc., no matter if you take a pill or not. Another red flag you should look out for is if a product promises weight loss for everyone, regardless of their age, their gender, their physical activity level, you know, how much they eat. You know, no, nothing can give the same amount of weight loss for everyone. Everybody is different. Everybody eats differently. Everybody exercises differently. So, so it's, not, it's not possible to lose the same amount of weight as everybody else if you don't make changes in your diet or exercise. Right, and one of my favorites is something that promises weight loss by simply putting the product on your skin or wearing something. So you may have seen commercials for wraps that you put on your body and it can help you shed pounds. It's just not physically possible. Like I said before, the only way you lose weight is by making changes in your diet or exercising more, a combination of the two. So simply wearing something or you know, putting it on your skin is not going to help you to lose weight. Right, so in summary today, you know, I touched on a few popular fad diets lately. These included intermittent fasting, the keto diet, the gluten-free diet, and I talked about potential benefits but mostly side effects of these diets. Um, for example, intermittent fasting, there really isn't a lot of evidence to support this as a long-term weight loss method. And the weight loss that people do see with intermittent fasting is usually no different in the long run than the weight loss scene with just following a regular diet, healthy diet. So also the keto diet, same kind of thing. You know, the weight loss scene is only temporary. Usually most people gain it back. The keto diet is also very hard to follow in the long run. It can have a lot of negative complications like nutrient deficiencies, constipation, difficulty socializing. Um, you know, the gluten-free diet should really only be followed by people who are celiac disease or for people who have made changes in their diet otherwise and only feel better after they exclude gluten. But you do, people who do follow gluten-free diet should be very cautious. They should meet with their doctor or dietitian to make sure they do get all the nutrients they need as well. Uh, and then, I think, oh, okay, one weight loss method or you know, just a general healthy diet that we do recommend is the Mediterranean diet. You know, healthy fats, whole grains, limited red meat consumption, consumption of seafood and lean protein. So if that's something you want to try to follow, you know, more information is available. And you know, if you ever see something on TV or radio that promises weight loss without exercising, without diet changes, you know, a rapid amount of weight loss, or a weight loss just by simply wearing the product. You know, be cautious. These usually are not true, and you know, it's not going to be a good use of your money. Instead, you know, make changes to follow a general healthy diet, including whole grains, lots of fresh fruits and vegetables, lean protein, low-fat dairy products. You know, limiting the sugar, sweetened beverages, and these changes will help you to follow a more healthy lifestyle and may result in weight loss. So now, with this information, take our quiz and test your knowledge about fad diets and healthy eating.